We are back with another edition of the Red and Blue Rivalry Podcast. This is the Week 4 edition where we talk all things San Francisco 49ers and Dallas Cowboys. My name is Eric Hernandez, calling all the faithful. And I am Philip Enriquez, repping for America's team, man. And uh, both these teams, man. There you know. We, we talked about it during the offseason. We dreamt about it. And here we are, man. Oh, my God. There you know, like you said. And it How's was, it feel, man? Oh, it feels amazing. I mean, football's exciting. Football hasn't been exciting for the Niners. If you're a Niners fan, it's been a long, slow ride to get here. But I think we're finally here where it's like this team is fun to watch. For sure. So before we even jump into the previews and the reviews and the normal things we do around here on the podcast, I thought it'd be fun if we uh, started power ranking all the undefeated teams currently in the NFL. The Cowboys are going to be on that list. The 49ers are going to be on that list. So why not put it on the podcast, right? Yep. All right. So look, we got eight undefeated teams. Now, one of those teams only has two wins because they tied in the season opener against the Arizona Cardinals. I'm going with Detroit as the eighth best undefeated team. And I agree. I think that they're pretty good, but I kind of still want to see a little bit more. That draw to to uh, Arizona is bad because they were up and they let them come back. You they know, were in control. Yeah. That whole game, yeah. So that, that, that to me, kind of knocks them down at the bottom by default. But then again, you know, they've surprised a couple of teams. They beat the Eagles in Philly. Beat the Eagles in Philly. Beat the Chargers, who were another team everybody thought was going to be contending this year. Yeah, I, maybe, you know, maybe Patricia is the one Balachek disciple that gets his shit together. Yeah, we'll see. So speaking of the AFC East, I, at number seven, I got the Buffalo Bills. Here's a team who I think this, this, this team has a legit stout defense. Still not quite sold on the offense long term, so I'm going to place them here at seven. I know they play the Patriots next, so I don't think they're going to be on this list very much longer. No, and I think we owe an apology to that Grateful Dead Bills fan that just called us idiots and stuff yeah. on YouTube. Apparently, he was right. He was right. He was we right. are idiots. Yeah, they're yeah. undefeated. We thought the Jets might uh, yeah. <laughs> do uh, a little better. Then we forgot about who coaches the Jets. Adam Gase is going to Adam Gase. Got to do some more research then, next you know, time. Yeah, and then Adam, you know, Sam Darnold getting mono and help yeah. that situation. That didn't help at all, man. But Buffalo, I mean... You know, what's interesting is that they could have easily lost the Cincinnati game because, you know, they're 2-0, they're looking ahead to New England, but, you know, and they let Cincinnati come back to unanswered touchdowns, yeah. but it takes grit, you know, it could have easily folded and they still, they, their offense went down the field, Josh Allen let them down the field, and then you have their defense. He's looking and, a whole lot better this season than last. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I think that you have, you know, their defense sealed it, which I think is why they, you know, they deserve that. There's still some question marks and, and New England will be a great test for them to see where they're really at. Yeah, I mean, if they can keep that game competitive, then I'm sold. This team's yeah. legit. So we'll see. Uh, at six, me personally, man, I got the San Francisco 49ers. And much like the Buffalo Bills, I think this defense is legit. I've seen, I was very impressed the way they handled the Pittsburgh Steelers' offensive line on the defensive side of the ball. There was a lot of plays that they were making on the defensive side of the ball. I'm just not quite sure that the offense is there and again that's not to say that it can't get there we know shanahan is the offensive genius he is we know you know garoppolo's coming off injury but i still have to see more from this offense before i say hey they can compete in the top five and shocker is i have them there too and i agree with you i've seen i mean you watch the the cincinnati game and you see when that offense is clicking they're, I mean, they can put up, they average 100, what, 260 something yards rushing. And, and then in this game against the Steelers, they average, I think, a little over 160. They can run the ball. They run, the way they run the ball reminds me of the way the Rams ran the ball last year when they yeah. were successful. It was just that you want to, A, you want to see it continue, and B, you want to see them play a perfect game with no interceptions, no fumbles. You just want to see them do that. They have to clean yeah. up the offense, yeah. honestly. Yeah, that's it. It's not so much they don't have the talent or the, or the play calling. It's just they have to clean up the mental errors that they have. Once they do that, I really do feel like if they can have, and, you know, they're on their bye, then they, we'll talk about more later. They have Cleveland and then at the Rams. If they can go in there and, and score with the Rams and even win that game, I mean, they shoot right up the power rankings. Yeah. So at five, I'm going with the Green Bay Packers. You know, Green Bay didn't look super impressive in week one. But since then, man, they really came roaring back with the vengeance. They look good. They beat division rival Kirk Cousins and the Minnesota Vikings, who's another contender. I mean, that's impressive. You know, Aaron Rodgers, even though he's not looking like the Aaron Rodgers of five years ago, 
He's getting the job done, and at this point, I think Green Bay is going to be a force to be reckoned with in the NFC. And here is where I place America's team, the Dallas Cowboys. And I think Dallas is a lot better than people thought. Their offense is running good. The defense, I kind of still want to see how they handle like a top tier offense being run on. You know, we talked about wanting to see the Dallas. I mean, me wanting to see the Niners' defensive line against a real offensive line. You know, like in Pittsburgh. So, you know, I, I really want to see what happens when Dallas has to play, you know, coming up the Saints, the Packers. Teams well, that's that really, Kamara. Yeah. So you're going to see how they handle those kind of offenses. I just want to see how they look on the defensive side because the last real big image I have of them on the defense was the Rams just running on them. So I just yeah. want to see them kind of put those those worries to bed. You know, Dak looks great. Zeke looks great. The offense. Let's just see the defense kind of catch up to the offense. And, yeah, I'd move them up. Okay, so that's our fifth. At the four spot, I have the LA Rams. And you know what? I have the Rams four too. Okay, so the Rams, man, for me, look, the Rams have been very impressive. They just come off defeating the Cleveland Browns. And, you know, the Rams just look like as much as I I thought this team might take a step back, uh, they're kind of proving me wrong here early in the season. It's interesting because you still haven't seen Gurley kind of really have one of those games yet. Signature Gurley yeah. game. And I yeah. feel like, I'll be honest with you, the offense kind of comes and goes, but when it's on, it's on. Yeah, right. And it's just more of like, you know, yeah, like a bad interception, you know, Goff yeah. will throw a couple. Yeah, he did of, through one or two of those. And then you're just a little worried about that part. But other than that, you know, I think they're still going to be up there. They're still going to contend. Um, you still have McVay. That defense, I think, is kind of leading the way. I mean, Aaron Donald is just wrecking shop. And then you're getting stuff out of defensive ends like, you know, um, Clay Matthews and Dante yeah. Fowler, who are your ends. And they're getting up there. They're sacking the quarterback. They're putting pressure. So I think this defense is actually a little ahead of the offense right now. Yeah, and Wade uh, Phillips is still back there calling the defensive uh, plays. I mean, he's always able to get the most out of the pass rush Yes, anywhere he's went whether yes. Denver, Dallas, or now in L.A. So can't sleep on the Rams, man. At number three, I have the Dallas Cowboys. You must have the Green Bay Packers. Okay, so we're flipping our three and our five here. Yes. Right? So me, I, the reason why I got Dallas three is, I mean, that offensive line looks untouchable right now. It looks as great as any offensive line I can remember seeing played. Dak doesn't have to take his jersey to the cleaners, not at any point. I think the offense under Callum Moore, has now become explosive. Zeke and Pollard both had 100 yards apiece. Witten's making a couple big plays. You are right, though. I still, I'm admitting, you know, I do want to see this team shut down Alvin Kamara this weekend and and really just stop the run. You know, I don't want to see any more than 85 yards on the ground by a running back. And if they can string a couple of those, you know, good performances against the run on defense, I don't have any more worries, and that's why this team's three for me. Yes, the reason I have the Packers three is, is like, the way you talked about Dallas is often finally showing you coming to life. They got everything they want now. Is the way I feel about the Packers' defense. You know, like, you know, Dallas invests in their offensive line through free agency, through trades. They've invested in their offense. Green Bay has done the same thing with defense. Drafting Rashawn Gary, you know, Darnell Savage, Jair Alexander, getting Preston Smith, Zadarius Smith. You know, they really put a lot drafting Blake Martinez. And yeah. I think that they're they're a team now that their defense is really it's 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 one of those units that where Aaron Rodgers doesn't have to feel like he has to win the game on his own. Right. You know, this team is and I'm you know, I'm not saying they're gonna be this team, but they're reminding me of the Denver Broncos with Peyton Manning, where it was the defense at the end and Peyton right. just had to make a play or two. Yeah. You know, Aaron Rodgers talked about it talking about offensive lines, that was the cleanest game that he's had where he didn't get hit a lot in the last game, you know. Yeah. So you kind of look at it like he did that against Denver. I, and then as far as the offense, I just know, okay, it's, a, it's only a matter of time. Let's say we talk about San Francisco. Green Bay's offense, it's going to be a matter of time before they kind of, I believe, they'll meld LaFleur's coaching and his scheme to what Aaron Rodgers does. And when they do that, if they can click there, they're a top team in the NFC. Yeah, so you, you're more basing it like, I mean, that you feel like they have so much more potential than what they're even showing right now. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, I can't argue with that because if they do get on the same page, coaching, quarterback, and this defense, I mean, this team has no weakness. Yeah. Number two, a team that's coming off an impressive win over another contender like the Baltimore Ravens. I'm going to go with the Kansas City Chiefs. You know I love Patrick Mahomes. I think he's probably the best quarterback I've watched since Dan Marino. Mahomes is it's unreal, and it's like... 
like I don't want to be prisoner of the moment, and we're not one of those guys that oh, because we see him in this era, that means he's better than everybody. It's just watch him, you know. You just watch, watch him. him. It's amazing, and it's like wow, he's a video game. It really is. And then the he's on pace have- for six thousand yards. <sighs> Can you imagine? And look at his receivers, and he's doing them without Tyreek Hill. Imagine when Tyreek Hill comes back with Nico Harvin. Another weapon. Travis Kelsey. They're two for a couple reasons, and I almost put them at one. I really did. I honestly had a hard time with this one because the level of competition they faced is probably the highest so far. Yeah. Beating the Baltimore, that's the best. It's impressive. Of all the teams that all these undefeated teams have played, that's the best team. That's the best signature win yeah. out of any of these eight teams. Exactly. You know, and you beat Jacksonville. You ran up and down on Jacksonville. So, I mean, that counts for something. And I just look at them like they are going to be tough to beat. And then their defense. I mean, you look at what they can do. If they can get ahead, that defense is built to, like, play Play with a head. head. Yeah, Yeah. they can get after you with Clark and everything. But, you know, there's a reason why number one is number one. And I think we'll go into that. Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, the New England Patriots, with or without Antonio Brown. Oh, they don't need that clown. Are the number one team in the league. They're the defending Super Bowl champions. I feel like I'm always kissing their ass, even though I hate this team with oh, a yeah. passion. With a passion. But I just can't deny it. Like, if I want to pretend like I know anything about football, it doesn't take a genius to see the Patriots are the best team in the NFL. This is why I ultimately put them ahead of Kansas City, because even though they're, the teams they've played have not been well, they beat, they whipped the Steelers. The Steelers haven't shown anything, even when Ben was healthy. They beat the living hell out of the Dolphins. They beat the Jets. But the fact is, on defense, this is probably the best defense they fielded in a very long time. Yeah, like I agree. You know, this is, I mean, this is unstoppable at times. They shut everybody down. And then you have Balichick knowing how to shut people down. It's not just that they have the players, but they have the mind of the scheme. And then when I look at offense, this offense can beat you however they want. They can run the ball. We've seen them run the ball. They have, you know, Josh Gordon and, you know, Edelman. And now you have this team where they can throw deep. They can throw short. They can play action you. There's so many ways they can take advantage of a defense. It is almost True. impossible to stop that. They can be anything. You know, yeah, they, I, I feel like the New England Patriots are kind of like wa- walking into like the men's warehouse where like, hey, they got a suit tailored for you. Exactly. Whatever you come in, if you come in with an MVP style quarterback, oh, I know how to shut that down. Yeah. Oh, you want to come in with Ezekiel Elliott or a Todd Gurley? I know how to shut the run down. Yeah. They know how to stop any team. Yeah. They, they will tailor a game plan for you yeah. and they will execute. That's why I think this team is ultimately – it's the ultimate adaptability for this team that makes them dangerous. Yep. And that's why I got them number one, man. So we've talked a lot about some of these other teams in the NFL, but, you know, this is a podcast primarily for the Niners and the Cowboys. So our teams are coming off some big wins, man. How do you feel beating the Pittsburgh Steelers, even though it is big Benless? I mean, it was still – Their offensive decent line, yeah. Win, yeah. Oh, I was excited. It was – that game – I don't know what happened. I'm gonna be honest. I'm still excited. I know the offense made a ton of mistakes, but I mean, when I look at the the errors, they're just things that like they're, they're gonna happen every once in a while in a game. You're gonna, you know, shotgun. You're gonna, you know, they went for a fly sweep. They hit one of the receivers, fumble in the red zone. Like, you don't expect those to happen continuously. You know, the interceptions. Those I'd rather have those two interceptions that Garoppolo threw than the ones he threw against Tampa and Cincinnati. Because, like, the ones that he threw against the Steelers was, you know, one is a screen where it bounced off the receiver's hand. And then the second one with Minka, it was a very interesting one, the way Shanahan broke it down. Because Shanahan talked about this, is that the, he thought, or the way the play was drawn up, was that the ball was going to be on the right hashes, on the right side of the hash. Right. And it wasn't. It was centered. And, be, and they didn't account for that. So the, tight, the wide receiver split. He was too far. He says he's two yards out farther than he should be. Right. And that's so, you know, it's kind of cool to hear like, wow, two yards makes a difference because he goes, if he's two yards closer to that. I mean, if the design, the the play is designed to throw to a spot. Yeah. Big difference. Yeah. Two yards and especially off the snap. So he goes, that's an error. We have to clean up. So it's kind of like I didn't have a problem with Grappolo throwing those two passes. There weren't bonehead. What were you thinking? They were, hey, he was trying to make a play. It just bounced off receiver's hands. I can live with that if he's trying to make a play. You know, I don't now you don't want that to happen, but it doesn't go on him. But see, for me, it's like you have to look at the game in its entirety on the offense. And when you look at the game in its entirety on offense, there was just too many turnovers. No matter how Five. you want yeah, no matter how you want to chop it up like, oh, I can live with these kind. But that there's still more turnovers to account for. I mean, I think this offense really has to clean itself up. 
because now I'm talking, I'm judging the 49ers on a higher standard than I would have coming into the season in week one. Yeah. Because I see that the defense is for real. You're not going to get an argument for me. If you want to match the 49ers defense with any defense in the league, I'm not going to laugh at you because I've seen what they can do to an offensive line that I respect like the Steelers. I mean, they took it to them. Yeah. And that's one of the best offensive lines in the game. So I know they can at least compete with the best in the league. Yeah. But the offense... It's just a little too inconsistent. It's a little too sloppy. That doesn't mean that I don't believe in Kyle. I don't want the 49ers fans to start hating on me. Look, I'm not saying that Kyle Shanahan's an idiot or anything like that, but he needs to get this cleaned up. Garoppolo needs Mm -hmm. to show us that he can play a little bit better than I've seen so far. You know, it's weird because... And I'm judging that as a top five team now. Yeah, so that's fair enough. And I look at it like this, is that Garoppolo has looked better every single game. In my opinion, because in this game, they blitzed the living hell out of him. And time after time, he stood in the pocket. He took shot on his leg. He took shots to the jaw. He got sandwiched. And he every shot he took, he still completed the pass yeah. accurately. He's competing out there for yeah, sure. Yeah, so he's moving in the right direction. And that's what you want to see. As long as he stays healthy, I feel like when I look at those turnovers, I look at it like this. Is it a trend or a fluke? And right. I just think that those the three of those were a fluke. The ones that scared me were the ones by the running back, Raheem Mostert, because those were two. One he when on the pitch where he kept his eyes off of it, and the other one where they hit him, where you just you get nervous because he is so fast. I mean, we're talking about yeah. like a guy who was a track star at Purdue, and you're just worried of holding on to the ball because when he gets the ball in space in a straight line, you know, he's lightning. So you want to make sure that he, those mistakes don't come. But everything else is like, okay, how much of it, like, do I think they're going to exchange fail, exchange snap? No. Do I think that they're going to have the fly sweep fumble? No. And I just don't think those are, you know, repeatable. Those are going to happen. You're not going to see that every week. Yeah. So, you, of course, I agree with you in the sense that you want to see them kind of put it together, but they can run the ball like nobody oh, else. Oh, I, I did notice. I was impressed with the running game. I feel like they can run whenever they really felt like it. If they Let's just cut those turnovers in half, and they probably blow out the Steelers. Oh, for sure. Oh, without yeah, a doubt, yeah. because that took points off the board. And, and think of it like this. To speak to the defense, and let me get into the defense for a bit, I mean, the offense put them in two bad spots, and they walked away. Instead of getting touchdowns, they gave up two field goals. Right. So the difference is the Steelers had five turnovers. They they. They got five turnovers and only got six points off of them. The Niners right. got two and got 14 points off of them. Right. And that's the game. But you're not always going to be no, you don't want that. Every, no. every week. And no. That's the thing. You know, you don't want that. But, I mean, that's a better line than we're going to face in two weeks. Yeah. Because uh, we're on the bye. Sure. And Bosa, man, Bosa's the real deal. I mean, you watch what he, he did. Of, good off the bye. Yeah. And you watch what he did at Villanueva. And there's a scene where they sack Mason Rudolph where they just all meet at him. D Ford, Bosa, Buckner, Arms. And it's like, I don't know. How many teams have better offensive lines than the Pittsburgh Steelers? Maybe four or five teams you can say that about are yeah. on par with them. So everybody oh, else, yeah. I feel like, you know, we can we can hang with anybody. Yeah. But, I mean, it was a great game. All that BS aside, game-winning touchdown by Garoppolo. Defense closed out the shop, you know, and we go into the bye 3 and Did Pettis remind you that he still plays for the yeah, Niners? Yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, my God, that's what I'm talking about. It was, nice to see him. it was so nice to see him. Act that touchdown... And you could tell how much it meant to him, like, finally, because he's been in the doghouse. And he's been, you know, people have questioned him. He's kind of a different cat. He's a weird dude. But, I mean, he wants to play. You can see it. It's just kind of getting that fire lit under him. And then you got guys like Trent Taylor who can't walk on one foot, hop out to go congratulate him. Yeah. You know, know, everybody was so happy for him because they know. And that's what I love about this team in general. Not to riff too much, but they care for each other. They, like, they want to see each other. What does Trent Taylor have to care about Dante Pettis like that? Like where he comes out of the thing happy for him like they're that. They're a team, man. And it's just they're you feel it. like it. You yeah. see it. You're watching yeah, they're, it they're, play out in front of as you. As we speak, they're at a wrestling show for right. partying together. Just, I've seen that. And, and it's fun. Like this team is, this is the first time in a very long time this team is fun to root for. Doesn't mean they're going to win the Super Bowl, but they're like a team I look forward to watching. The minute they clean up the offense, they're just going to be, you know, they're going to be getting some primetime games. Yeah. Could and, be. And so we we're talking about that, right? The the Chargers and the Pittsburgh are scheduled. Week six, for yeah. Week six, yeah. Week six. So I'm hoping they flex that out, especially if the Rams are undefeated and the Niners. Yeah, I'd much rather watch those two teams. Teams play. undefeated for the West. Yeah. But speaking of a team that gets a lot of games in prime time, we're Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys, and man. Three and zero against the uh, Miami Dolphins. And, you know, or or was that the University of uh, yeah, Southern Florida? I don't know. Some PCC. Yeah. I don't know what they were. <laughs> uh, but the Cowboys, you know, they beat up on the Dolphins, thirty-one to six. 
they cover a 22 point spread and you know what's crazy mm. in some cowboys fans minds it wasn't good enough but that just tells you like how these expectations are starting to skyrocket and you know what i can't blame them man dak prescott he went 19 of 32 125 yards two touchdowns threw a threw a crazy pick because he was quote unquote getting greedy and he threw in a rushing touchdown so dak prescott still on top of his game I really want to point out, I was really impressed that Zeke and Pollard are the first two backs in Dallas Cowboys history to go for 100 yards in the same game since 1998 when it was Emmitt Smith and the former Seattle Seahawk, Chris Warren. Oh, so that's crazy. That's old school to me. Yeah. Like, man, that's like Madden 97 type stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's really cool. Zeke had 125 yards on 19 carries. I mean, he's running for over six and a half yards per carry. That's great. Pollard had 103 yards on 13 carries uh, for a 7.9 yards uh, per carry average, and he threw in a touchdown. So, I mean, the running game looks good. The passing game looks great. I was talking about how I really like Dak. Again, it's just more of the same, continuing to spread the ball around. None of these receivers are getting 200-yard games, but everybody's involved. Cooper kind of led the way this week, six receptions, 88 yards, two touchdowns. And I was telling you, in the press conference after the game, they asked Cooper, you know, take us through that awesome uh, route you ran on the touchdown pass. And his reply is like, well, which one? I mean, that's how, good, that's how good the dude is running his routes, man. I mean, I think he's probably one of the best route runners in the game right now. Mm-hmm. And then my boy, Jason Winton, you know, I loved it. You know, seeing him, he had just three receptions. And it's like I told you, man, a couple of weeks ago. I don't expect 100-yard games. I don't expect 15 reception games. Just give me three three catches. And that's what he did. Three receptions, 54 yards, 18 yards per catch average, including a th- an over 30 yards on a third and 20, where he just ran up the sideline. I mean, just got open. Just being Witten, that awareness, that on-field awareness that you just can't teach. doesn't matter how fast, how slow you are. Some people just know the game. And, and it proves valuable on something like a third and 20 when you're not expected to finish that. You're not expected to get no, that No, you're first just trying down. to get a field, extra space for field, giving it a field goal range, punt, whatever. But, yeah, not to convert. And win converts, man. So, again, the, the offense looked good in the first quarter. Really just, I mean, I was kind of looking for a pulse in the second quarter. They went into halftime 10-6 up on the Dolphins. And then when the third quarter came along, the Cowboys just said, okay, let's play, put up a couple of quick scores. And then ran the clock out on the Dolphins in the fourth. Is that really why they look. got the yards for the running? Right. Yeah, that's yeah. where Pollard got his 100. Yeah, I mean, they just continued to dominate them on the ground. Um, so for me, man, like I said, I'm impressed. It was a 22-point spread. They win by 25. And yet, we're still thinking there's many improvements to be made. I'd like to see the Cowboys get a it's still. I'd still like to see more pressure. Yeah. I mean, I thought we would be seeing multiple sacks from a couple of defensive ends I, I thought tank would get a couple he you know he's got one but you know I, th- I thought he might get two or three in this game yeah and it's just it just goes to show you that expectations are rising and, and for good reason man i'm really i mean right now i'm just pumped to be so a cowboys fan i man. heard uh, i heard taco charlton got a sack Taco Charlton got a sack on Dak. And so <laughs> he so got a sack in Dallas. In Dallas. Oh, my God. On Dak. And they asked Dak at the press conference. Uh. And they said, oh, you know, Taco got, you know, you got, you took that sack. Something like, basically, like, what do you think about that? And he said, ah, I was thinking about my completion percentage. <laughs> I said, oh, man. He's yeah. like, I could have just went out of bounds. Yeah. But I wanted to give him something. Give him something. I was like, up. I got, yeah. So you I, like Taco. That's real cool, man. So everything so far is all good in Dallas. Now, I do have to start pointing in the direction of the future. We do have a game to play, unlike the 49ers. Um, We have the New Orleans Saints. And really, my my big concern for the game is that the Cowboys can stop a player like Alvin Kamara, who Pete Carroll, I believe, in his press conference admitted after the game he underestimated him. And they paid for it. But as a non-Cowboys fan, taking out the Cowboy bias and the Cowboy excitement in this season, what do you see happening in this game? I'd look at it like this. If Drew Brees was there, I think they would, I would have the Saints winning this game. But I, without Drew Brees, I mean, I think they caught Seattle. Seattle's kind of like, when I think of Seattle and their personality, it does kind of remind me of Dallas where they can kind of let ego get in the way. They can go, oh, well, we got this team. You know, they, and, and, and part of it is because of the success. I mean, yeah. When you're in New England, I mean, when you're in Seattle, you've been to the playoffs, 
five straight years, six straight years. You've been to a Super Bowl. You've won a Super Bowl. You're Dallas. You've been to the playoffs with three of the last five years, six years. You know, you've been competitive. You've come against teams that are either hurt or ailing or not as good, and it's easy to take your foot off the pedal. And I think that, man, I do think as far as this game goes, it, it they can. I think the Saints will probably be up at halftime. I'm going to be honest with you. Really? But I think sooner or later, I think Dallas kind of like, just like they did with Miami, They'll put the, you know, they'll start to rely on their running game. They'll get things in check. They'll slow down Kamara to the point where they'll bottle him and he won't be able to do what he did against, you know, the Saint, uh, Seahawks. So. What do you think the offense is going to look like under Teddy Bridgewater? Wa- um, Teddy Bridgewater, excuse yeah. me. I think for me, when I see the difference, because I was, and again, I'm just kind of going off some of the highlights I saw this weekend, but I didn't really see any highlights or any big plays. Going down the field. No. Where Drew Brees is not afraid to throw it, you know, no. beyond 10 yards. I think Bridgewater likes his checkdowns. Yeah, and I think what I think because we haven't seen Dallas really put a lot of pressure on quarterbacks, I think that's why Bridgewater will look okay. Again, just like with Seattle, you know, he'll be able to make his completions. They'll be able to move the chains, get down the field. But I think they'll end up having to settle for more field goals than they would like. Yeah. And I think that Kamara will get a couple loose. They'll, Kamara will get his. And that's why I say it'll be close because I do think that the offense, just like the offense kind of stalled out in the second quarter against Miami, I could see them having just a half where it takes them a while to get their feet under them. They're in New Orleans. That's not an easy place to play. No, that's what I'm worried about. Yeah. That they're going to the to the Dome. Man. But I think at the end of the day, my view is this, that the talent, talent reigns supreme. And you don't have your MVP quarterback. I just don't see you getting really off. But I think that Dallas will have – it'll be a stiffer test than anything they've faced so far. This is the toughest team they've played. Oh, yeah, without so, a doubt. So it'll be a good measuring stick to see how good they are. You know, that's what you really want to do. You test yourself. And I think uh, New Orleans will be ready, man. Sean Payne doesn't seem like the kind of guy that lays down for anybody. No, he's not going to back down. No. That's for sure. He, he's not backing down. He, I mean, he's, I, I expect him to try to find a weakness in the Dallas defense and try to exploit it. That's just the, the way he coaches his team. Yeah. Um, that's how he got to the Super Bowl way back when. I just think that with Teddy Bridgewater – I don't know if the offense is going to be aggressive enough and if the Cowboys are up to the task of finally stopping the run. I mean, the only way this team's going to win is Kamara's going to go crazy. Kamara has to have a 100-yard game for this team to win. That's the way I I look at it. I don't think Teddy Bridgewater's going to win the game if he throws for 300 yards. I don't think so either. But I think he's going to be the guy that can move the chains on third and four when you play action. Because the way to beat beat Dallas is you got to keep that offense off the field. You really have to limit possessions they have because Dallas is, they can drain the clock and be efficient at it. So you don't want them to do that to you. You want to be able to do it to them. So you want to be able to put their offense on the field. You want to, actually, you want to put their defense on the field. You want to make sure you're converting. You're putting those linebackers in space. They've already shown the pass rush is not is still lacking. You want to continue to make that an issue because you're tiring them out. You want to limit Dallas on the offensive side. And I think if you can do that and move the chains – I think you can slow their offense down. You can limit their possessions. And then you just have to make sure you score. You can't go down the field and not get anything. Right. You know? Yeah. So that, I think that's kind of like the formula the Saints are going to look at. Kind of a ball control offense. Keep Dallas off the field. And then, you know. But I think that the difference will be Dallas will be able to convert their red zone opportunities into touchdowns. Yeah. Where I just don't know how the Saints do it consistently. Yeah. I mean, that, that is a big factor. I think the red zone, without a doubt. Um, I think my only concern going into the game, and I'll finish with this, is how the Cowboys play Kamara, not in the running game, but in the passing game. Because we all know Kamara is a dangerous weapon coming out of the backfield. And I want to see that these linebackers are up to the challenge. Um, You know, for me, I got to admit, I didn't see a lot from Jalen Smith in the first half of the Dolphins game. So some of those completions that Rosen was making, I'm noticing Jalen Smith kind of got lost in the shuffle. You know, just just on a few plays. That's just what I seen. So towards the second half, I think he kind of said, "Okay, I'm playing now," and turned it on and was Jalen Smith. But um, kind of like, I, hey, I gotta be honest. If I could dish it out to the 49ers and saying their offense isn't consistent, I need my linebackers to be consistent for a whole game. Mm. So I'm gonna need them to be consistent, especially in the passing game, if they have to cover a back like Kamara coming out of the flats, running wheel routes, whatever they do, however they try to get him the ball. Mm-hmm. even if it's not on the handoff. I want to see that the Cowboys can handle that. That's my biggest concern because I know how d- dangerous Kamara is and I know how inconsistent some of these linebackers, especially Jalen Smith, look covering some of these backs out of the backfield. So that could be the potential 
uh, that Sean Payton's looking for, the potential matchup he's looking for. But all in all, I think the Cowboys should pull this one out. I'm picking Dallas. I expect them to win by about a touchdown, 10 points uh, if, if, you know, they're having a good game. But, uh, you know, I just don't think Teddy Bridgewater has it, man. No, I agree. I think Dallas ends up pulling away in the second half and winning the game. Yeah, so, I mean, anything else Anything else going on in Cowboys Niners world before we uh, sign out of here? Uh, it just kind of sucks that we're on buy. I mean, I kind of like the fact the buys early, so I get football the rest of the year. That's but, true. But, but when you're on a roll, it's kind of hard to stop. Yeah, but it's nice to get a couple, uh, get a week off, let everybody get healthy. Our rookie wide receiver, uh, Jalen Hurts, should be back. He was missed. A, he was there for the first game against Dallas in the preseason. He was out with like a back contusion, back fracture. He had something bad. Ouch. Yeah, to quote uh, Tyson, a spinal. Uh, yeah so he's back yeah. and um you know he was i remember if you remember the game i mean he was the guy who caught that first touchdown he got both those yeah. touchdowns yeah I, so I to know. have him kind of in the slot opposite side of Kittle and the tight end it's gonna be pretty cool to see what you know shanahan can do with him i'm excited it'll be a monday night game prime time game against them but unfortunately i gotta wait an extra week all right man so you know we got the big game But this has been the Red and Blue Rivalry Podcast. We will be back with it in week five.